as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord of my soul. blessing, every miracle, answered prayer. Thank you also for bringing peace and strength in the middle of those situations you're not quite finished with just yet. Thank you for every single person in this room and for binding together as we chase after you. We're here for you, God. We're here to worship you, honor you, to hear your word, to draw closer to you, God. Open our minds to understand and soften our hearts to receive what you want to do here today. God, we ask that you move in a mighty way in all the other truth-filled churches in this area. Pour out your Holy Spirit on their services to overflowing, God. Our city, our world are crying out for you, Jesus. Our great commission is to seek and to save the lost. To do that, we need you and we need each other. 
We love you. We love your people. Do a work in us and through us like only you can. Wake us up and stir our hearts to move the purpose you in the purpose you created us for. Have your way in this place this morning, God. Amen. Make 
me through the water, walk me through the fire, do what you are famous for, what you are famous for, shut the mouth of lions, bring troubles to life, and do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. In you, God, I believe in you. Release your love inside of me. Unleash your power for all to see. Spirit, come and fall on us over. What you are famous for Shut the mouth of lions Bring troubles to life and Do what you are famous for What you are famous for God of exceedingly God of abundantly More than we ask or think Lord, you will never fail Your name is powerful famous for what you are famous for make way through the water walk me through the fire do what you are famous for what you are famous for shut the mouth of lions bring troubles to life do what you are famous for what you are famous for make way through the me through the fire do what you are famous for what you are famous for shut the mouth of lions bring troubles to life and do what you are famous for what you are famous for i believe in you god i believe
I've seen you breathe life with it, so I'll pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of it. Your promises never fail. I've got stories I'll live to tell, so I'll pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of it. I've witnessed your faithfulness I've seen you breathe life with it So I'll pour out my praise again You're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of it Your promises never fail I've got stories I'll live to tell So I'll pour out my praise again You're worthy God, you are it one more time. I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've seen you breathe life with it. So I'll pour out my praise again. You're worthy. God, you're worthy of all of it. Your promises never fail. I've got stories I'll live to tell. So I'll Pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God. You're worthy of all of it. We serve a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Every miracle, every promise, every, every answered prayer that you've had in your life or anything you've ever heard about from someone else, a testimony is just confirmation that my God did it before and he can do it again. There is nothing that is beyond his power and his scope and he is in this place right now. There's such a sweet presence of the Lord. And we cannot continue to, to, to hold this in when we have a city that is around us right now that is hurting and lost and broken in a world that is chaotic, that we have an answer that they are searching for. And it is on us to do that, to witness it to them. I'm so thankful I have that responsibility today. I'm so thankful I get to share the gospel with this city. And I am not going to take it for granted. One more time, if you would, let's just clap our hands to the Lord. Let's, let's give him just a little bit more praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much for standing. We really appreciate you worshiping and entering and helping us enter into a presence in a, uh, of the Lord and, and to feel his presence here in this atmosphere of worship. This is, it feels good in here today, doesn't it? I feel good in the house of God today, and I feel like God is, is uh, doing something right now. You go ahead and sit down, guys. You've been standing for a few minutes. You get comfortable. We have a... We have a, uh, we're, we're on our backup Keurig this morning. Thank you so much, Hannah, for donating your Keurig to the cause. So our well broke on our other one, so that's all right. We're making do. We're, we're hobbling around. It's good to see everybody here this morning. So glad we're all back together again. I tell you what, last week it just felt like we were running, uh, we were running the, uh, the, the skeleton crew. Kind of, you know, everybody was out traveling and sick and everything else. And, and now I've kind of got, I don't know, it's, I, well, I know what it is. I'm, I'm stuffy and I'm fat right now, so I snore a lot. And so my throat is, I tell you, dried out. So if you see me, I'll be reaching for the water a few times today. But listen, it's good to see everybody this morning. I don't want to hold anybody long, but I do have some quick announcements, and then let's just jump into the Word of God today. Uh, as Thanksgiving, we know it's fast approaching. I mentioned this last week. Listen, just a quick reminder. If you do not have a family that uh, is close by that you can spend Thanksgiving with, or you just don't want to cook, 
Uh, uh, we are opening our home to each and every one of you. You're more than welcome to come by. Uh, we're going to have the traditional meal. We're going to do the turkey. We're going to do the ham stuffing. Do y'all know what rice dressing is? Like, is everybody, okay, all right. Caitlin is shaking her head. No, I will explain this later. Rice dressing is is the, the one of the greatest uh, side dishes of all times. Uh, mashed potatoes, so on. We're going to have it all. And so... Uh, just let us know as soon as possible if you want to, to come and be a part of our Thanksgiving. We would love to have you. We just want to make sure that we have enough prepared for everybody. Um, and my goal is also to have my fire pit completed by then. And it's going to take a miracle, but hopefully we can all gather around the fire pit afterwards. So, um, okay, so today, immediately following service, we're going to be doing step one of our First Steps program. I mentioned this a little bit the last couple of weeks. I want to encourage everybody that's here, uh, stick around First Steps. It's only going to take 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, what this is over the next four weeks, we're going to be just telling you a little bit about the church, how you fit into the church, maybe some things about yourself spiritually that you didn't even know. Um, but today is step one. We've got all the books and everything back in the back. Child care is provided. They're all going to be over in the, the uh, God, I can never remember what the name of it is. The grove, the the nursery. No, well, the nursery does kind of make sense, doesn't it? The greenhouse and the grove. There we go. And and so uh, the reason why we're wanting to do this right now, we're going to spend the next couple of months just getting in the habit of being in first steps immediately after. We want to hit the ground running the first of 2024 because it is coming very quickly, and we're talking aggressive growth. We're going to try and, and pack this place out and get as many people here, get them connected. We're going to start doing our small groups. I'm excited about small groups. Uh, for those that don't know, we're going to go in a little bit more detail about it after service, so stick around. You want to be a part of it. It's basically uh, an excuse to hang out and have fun, but also challenge each other spiritually. Finally, you should notice that there was a couple of new QR codes that were floating around here, not the ones on the back of the seats. These are different. Uh, some people have asked me how they can make donations to the church. If you want, you can scan one of those QR codes. It'll take you straight to our donation page. There's one at the coffee bar in the back. There's one at the check-in station. Natalie is supposed to be doing her job and like shoving it in people's face and like just demanding people make payments. No. Uh, but so listen, you can just scan the QR code. It'll take you again to our donation portal, and then you can set up ties, offerings, or if you'd like to donate a shirt. We're, I think, Melissa, how low are we on some shirts? We're, we're low, right? What, what is it? Large? Okay, we have no larges. If you wear a large, we're sorry. Bump, bump up. Eat a few more Debbie cakes and bump up to the XL. All right, so I hope everyone is feeling well-rested after your extra hour of sleep. <laughs> uh, I mean, let's be honest. If you have kids, that doesn't apply. Like, I mean, when they're up, you're up, right? I mean, they're going to come and get you. It doesn't really matter what the clock says, which does anybody... I actually... So Lindy fell for it this morning. She got up and she looked at the oven clock and she like, she was ready to go by 7.30. And I was like... I, I came down. I was still in my pajamas. I'm like, what are you doing? Like... But so it, I guess it, it was kind of our payback that I was making fun of people who set their clocks back and ended up getting her. So, so it, it, but anyways, let's go to the word this morning. I want to start by reading in the book of Titus, and we're going to look at chapter number three, and we're going to read verse number 14. So Titus three and 14, it says, our people must also learn to engage in good deeds to meet pressing needs so that they will not be unproductive. Lord, I thank you today for this presence that I feel in this house right now. And in, in, in this service, Lord, I pray right now that you would continue to minister to our hearts and our minds through this word that you have given to me. Lord, I pray that it would find good ground this morning, that you would challenge us and encourage us, oh God, to begin to build the pillars of our ministry and the pillars of, of what it takes to be a great Christian. Lord, I, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch every heart and every mind to receive this word. In Jesus name. Everyone said in Jesus name. So for just a few minutes this morning, let's talk about a simple truth that good deeds meet pressing needs. So I want to begin this morning with a preface, a simple reminder that everything I'm about to say, I just want uh, anyone that's going to ever listen to this message, if you discover it two years from now on live stream or on YouTube, I want to make sure that everybody understands before I preach this message that you cannot buy your way into heaven. There is no amount of good things that you can do to earn a right to spend eternity with God. 
At the end of your days, the only thing that will matter is did you surrender your all to him and throw yourself at the mercy of God in order to find salvation through his grace? Because in case you didn't know today, his grace is sufficient. The blood of Jesus has no limits, it has no confines, and it has no shortages. The blood of Jesus has the power to take all that we have ever done and all that we will ever do and puts it the filth of our lives, the mistakes we've made into eternity's washing machine and sets the cycle to sanitize. So understand this morning that what I'm going to talk about is what I'm fixing to talk about and spend a few minutes discussing is ultimately just a byproduct of the bigger picture of living for God. You see, if you think that after you have found God in an altar and that you have been baptized in the name of Jesus and that angels rejoice because your name has been added to the Lamb's book of life, that you have fought your good fight, you finished your race, that I'm, but I'm sorry if you think that's all there is to it because the, you're missing the bigger picture of your existence here on earth. It's an age-old expression that if God really was only interested in your salvation, then he would probably just rapture each and every one of us the moment we were saved. Yet from my knowledge, there were only two or potentially three individuals that did not taste death in the history of mankind, according to the word of God. But with that knowledge in mind, it's important to ask yourself life's biggest question, why am I still here? And it's going to be a little different right now, but Zach, if you don't mind, do you mind grabbing this? Uh, there's, well, I'm going to pass out some index cards and some pens. And he's going to pass them out. Brandon, maybe if you want to just help him so we can get it knocked out quick. But as he's doing that, I want everybody to begin to think about something, and I want you to write it down. As it's being passed around, I want you to write it for your eyes only. person next to you doesn't need to know, even if it's your spouse. This is just going to be between you and God, but I want you to take just a couple of seconds and I want you to think and ponder and then write down the answer to this question. Aiden, do you mind putting it up there? It says, what is an urgent need that you see in the world today? What is an urgent need that you see in the world today? Not I, the world today. So just take a second and do that if you don't mind. No peeking, no cheating. This is between you and God. To give a little bit of context, it should be something that when you see it, you immediately recognize as being a problem. And you wish there were more people in the world that would take action to resolve it. You see it on the news. You might see it at the grocery store. You might see it in your kid's car line or at your job, but wherever and whatever it is, when you see it, you know it. And your heart just kind of goes out to it and it breaks your heart to see something going on in the world that no one is doing anything about. Don't try and get overly self-righteous. Don't try to get, you know, go with just, just go with your gut. Go with your instinct. Just write that down. Well, like I said, it's a self-examination, and you don't really have to share it with anyone if you don't want to. But if I were to go around the room right now, and if everyone has already done it and finished, that's fine. You can just hold on to the pen, or maybe you can draw on the back if you get bored. But if I were to go around the room right now and read a few of them, I would probably find a wide array of answers. I, 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 pro I seriously doubt everyone here in this room had the same thing that they just wrote down. There might be a little bit of overlap, but I think overall this group of people would probably cover a wide array of issues that our world is facing today. Now I want to read our scripture again today, but I want to read it from the New King James Version this time. It's Titus 3 and 14 in the New King James. It says, and let our people learn to maintain good works to meet urgent needs that they may not be unfruitful. Maintain good works to meet urgent needs to be fruitful. That in its most basic form are the three pillars by which we fulfill becoming great Christians. Maintain good works, 
meet urgent needs, be fruitful. If the branch could master those three things, then we could not contain the acts that would be done through this church and the members in this city. See, I've preached a message before about the definition of a great Christian. And according to the word of God, a great Christian is defined by two things, the great commandments and the great commission. If you follow those two things, then you, my friend, have achieved the title of a great Christian. The great commandment says that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. The great commission is to go and make disciples. You do those two things, you're a great Christian. Congratulations. So if you take those two definitions and you shine the light of our three pillars outlined in our reading today, we start to get a clear definition of how to obtain a great Christian status. We achieve it by, I'm going to say it so much you're going to just hate it, maintaining good works, meeting urgent needs, and being fruitful. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about how do we achieve those things. First, maintaining good works. If we scroll just a couple of passages up above where our text comes from today, we see in Titus 3 and 8 where it says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. The last sentence right there. Things that are good and profitable to men. Help someone in need. Help those that need help. Reach to those that are hurting and need a friend. In other words, love your neighbor as you love yourself. See, there's something powerful about sitting at a table and just having a cup of coffee and a good conversation. There is something powerful about putting your arm around someone that's hurting and just saying, hey, I'm praying for you this week. There's something powerful about saying, why don't you just come to lunch to, with me today? It's on me. I just want to take you to lunch. It might be a friend. It might be a stranger. Or it might even be an enemy. But our job is to love them as Christ loves them. Leviticus 19 is the first reference to loving your neighbor as yourself. And it says in Leviticus 19 and 18, You shall not take vengeance nor hold any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The emphasis, and the emphasis here is, is loving those that did not deserve or earn your love. 1 John 4 and 19 says, We love because he first loved us. Maintain good works. Do something for someone this week. It might be just a small gesture, but God has the ability to take the small and insignificant moments and turn them into life-changing events in someone's life. Secondly, we have to meet urgent needs. What are you doing to meet urgent needs in your community, in your family, and in this world? Is there something you could be giving? It might be time, it might be money, it might be prayer, it might be physical labor. What is the need that is sticking out like a sore thumb to you that it seems like the world just isn't doing enough to resolve? Because that is God speaking to you. That is God saying, I have called you and have shown my light onto this situation to get you involved. If no one has ever heard this statement before here at the branch, welcome because it's your first service, but we need to find purpose through service. Proverbs 3 and 27 says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to do it. Or this passage from 1 John honestly cuts me deep. When it says in John 3, 17, But whoever has worldly goods and sees his brother or sister in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God remain in him? A good Christian will help those in need without judgment or reservation. And the thing that is urgent to you is God specifically placing a calling in your life to help someone through that situation. As I mentioned earlier, most everyone in this room wrote something different on your card. So in my mind, 
That is just confirmation that God has chosen you to start finding ways to get involved in that situation that you just wrote down and to start maybe even doing your part. And finally, the last of the three pillars of being a good Christian is being fruitful. John 15 and 8 says, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. So let me ask you this morning, is your life, is your ministry, is it bearing fruit this morning? Bearing fruit will one day be our proof that we are disciples of Christ. Jesus cursed the fig tree that would not bear fruit. So I'd say it's pretty evident that Jesus doesn't have a lot of tolerance for those that aren't willing to produce fruit for the kingdom of God. So I read an article this week while studying for this, and it was titled, How to Be Fruitful Even When Your Life is a Mess. And the tagline was, how can we even think about producing spiritual fruit when we're in survival mode ourselves? And I think a lot of us feel that way sometimes. We want to be more involved. We want to do this. We want to help out here. But we're so spent at the end of the week that all we really want to do is just lay on the couch. But fruitfulness is not about how successful or productive or useful you are. Instead, it's about two main things. Your character and your behavior. Our character in that we are constantly growing spiritual fruit despite the conditions around us. In other words, when the environment isn't just perfect and we feel like we are in over our heads and a measure of true fruitfulness must rise up within us that says, it might not be perfect, but I'm going to be used by God as an instrument of blessing in the environment that he has placed me in. What someone said to you or how someone treated you should not affect the fruit you produce in your life. And secondly, we are fruitful through our behaviors. We cannot compare ourselves to others. The church down the street is doing what they have been called to do and we should do the same here. God planted us in this place for this season for a reason, and we have to fulfill our calling to this community. Amen. Aiden, this is a quote, but remember to embrace God's place for your life. In other words, stop holding on to Egypt when God is trying to bring you into a new promise. We have to love this area and its uniqueness. We have to love everything about Greenville. See, I'll be transparent this morning. I cannot love Louisiana more than I love Greenville. And I'm not the only one to say this to, but this is another quote, Aiden. If I keep one eye on what was, I will never be able to fully see the vision of what is. See, God has sent each and every one of you to the branch today for a reason that is greater than your own. Your salvation was step one. But we cannot afford to sit idly by as our friends, our family, and our city moves ever closer to an eternity without a relationship with God. We are fast moving toward the end of days and now is the time that we have to fulfill our calling and as the body of Christ and we must do our part to connect our personal worlds with the love of Jesus. Every storm, every trial, every urgent need is an opportunity for you to connect someone to this church and to help them start building a relationship with God. That they will one day do the very thing that you are doing right now. See, there is revival in this house this morning. There is a revival already here. And it's in the seats. It's in the place today. It's in the hearts and the lives and the minds of the people that are here right now. It's through your connections and your families and those that are confining in you. It's those that God has put into your path that you have to minister to. We're running out of time today. And we have to see the house of God filled. See, I'm closing with this thought right here. Linda sent this to me yesterday as I was studying, actually. And it coincidentally, coincidentally, because I feel like it was definitely a God thing, it went with the message today. So I feel it is confirmation and com compelled to share it with you in closing. 
This is a quote from Dr. Carolyn Leaf. It says, your purpose is not the thing you do. It is the thing that happens in others when you do what you do. And so as we close out this message today, I, I, I want us to all maybe just stand for just a second, and I won't hold anybody long. But I want to invite us all here to a moment of prayer in just a few minutes. Specifically, the thing that's on your card, I want that to be in your heart, and I want that to be in your mind. I want us to pray that God would shine his purpose so brightly in our lives this week that we have no choice but to take notice. That every opportunity, every calling, every, every uh, feeling that this is an urgent need in this world today. See, the urgent need that God placed in your life begins when the minister begins to, to minister to that need. We need to minister to the needs that we see before us. Look for opportunities to invite those to church this week. Those that need a healing. Those that need a breakthrough. Those that need joy and those that need peace. The church exists to help the broken and the needy. And I close with this scripture in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. It says, let's not become discouraged in doing good. For in due time we will reap if we do not become weary. Don't be discouraged this morning. The fruit takes time to grow, but the harvest season is nearly here. Let's all pray together. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I, I know that you have given us each a need, a, a purpose that we must fulfill. And Lord, I, I pray right now that you would open our eyes and make us aware of the needs that are around us, oh God. Let us be sensitive to ministering to others, to helping others, oh Lord. I pray that you would give us the strength we need right now in the name of Jesus to, to, to reach a world and a city that is hurting, that is lost, and that is broken. For we have that answer that they are seeking. By you, Lord, and in your power and in your might, I pray that you give us heart for our brothers and sisters. We thank you for all that you're going to do right now. Come on, one on everybody, just uh, just lift a hand, or, or maybe if you just want to find a place to pray, it, it doesn't matter, but we're just going to spend maybe five or ten minutes in just really seeking some things for, from God right now, letting Him put some things in our hearts and our minds, let Him minister to us and, and start opening our eyes to seeing the needs of this area and this city. In Jesus' name, let's pray. I know your thoughts before you even think I heard every last prayer you prayed Though I answered all the time You just didn't heed my cry And I know it's not easy Don't you give up on me Don't you give up on me Cause the darker the night Just getting started oh, There is so much oh, I'll be your way When there's no way out And I'll be your strength When your strength runs out And if you walk into the fire I wouldn't have it any other way Cause loving